What up, what a world, this is your homeboy Wordplay TJ, and I'm back with another video for you. This time around, I'm going to talk about the Music Modernization Act and what that means for your music career. Stay tuned. Before I get into what the Music Modernization Act is, I want to say please subscribe to this channel, especially if you're watching this video and you're new to this channel, haven't seen it before, because I appreciate every single subscriber and I'll have a new video up every week in order for you to see what's going on with the music business and absorb some lessons from that. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to hit that notification button. All right, so what is the Music Modernization Act and what does that mean for you? For several years, people have been putting together this bill in order to update the copyright laws that were created in 1908. Shout out to my guy, Ari Herstan, who has a blog called Ari's Take. He deciphered all of this information that was in the bill, put it in an email, and now I'm able to kind of break it down just a little bit more and put it in this video for you. So thanks to Ari, I will link down in the description below so you can understand it a little bit more if I'm not giving enough detail. So what's the importance of the Music Modernization Act? So a long time ago in 1908, copyright laws were set for musical recordings. But since then, and now it's 2018, nobody has updated these laws and we have a whole new climate as far as how music is consumed. Music is not consumed on uh, records and vinyls as much, well, vinyls making a rise again, but music is not consumed in physical formats as much as it is digitally. So we needed to update those laws, especially the laws that protect songwriters and copyright owners and people that create music in general. I'm gonna use a bunch of notes to go step by step and talk about the Music Modernization Act. So number one, the Music Modernization Act will get rid of NOIs, which are notices of intent. So basically what it is, is the digital service providers would send out uh, notices of intent to copyright owners, but some of these copyright owners wouldn't get the notices. They wouldn't be notified that their music is being used on these platforms. And so what would happen is they would push the music out and let it be streamed, but if they couldn't get in contact with the copyright owner, they didn't have to pay him. So now, places like Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, now they don't send out notices of intent. They simply just have to pay the owners of this music and set that money aside so these people can collect, no matter if they respond to a notice of intent or not. That's number one. So number two, it's a uh, pretty basic. So when ASCAP and BMI go to rate court, um, they usually talk to just one person. They talk to one judge who negotiates the rates with them and they talk about all these other kind of convoluted things that go into making the rates. And basically in rate court, it's only one person that gets to judge that. And so if that person decides not to raise the rates or decides to only raise it by a fraction and not base it off the market for like what we need as songwriters and music creators, then we're just stuck with that one judge's approval. So now we get appointed a judge at random for every single rate court appearance. Number three is ASCAP and BMI and other PROs can now go to those rate courts and they can say, we want to charge market rates. Now, what market rate is, is basically, hey, we got a willing seller of music and the DSPs, the people that stream music, are willing buyers of music. And so now we can kind of negotiate rates and say, hey, I think this is fair for me. And the DSPs could say, well, I think this is fair for us. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. Now those rates are negotiable based off of the Music Modernization Act. On top of that, 
ASCAP and BMI and other places like that can look at song recording royalties and things of that nature to better judge how people should get paid. So the Music Modernization Act will create a licensing body that will allow creators to claim their work without the DSPs being able to hold on to those royalties if it's not claimed. Here's a really, really great one. So number five is songwriters will now be obligated to get 50% of their works no matter what's going on. So sometimes music is put on these services and the songwriters aren't like notified or they have no idea that these songs went up or they're not credited, etc. And the publishers of these works will hold on to that money. Now that's not a thing. Now they're obligated to give 50% of these royalties to the songwriters no matter what. Number six, there was a time where digital service providers were not required to give all mechanical licenses or all mechanical royalties for all streams. They were only required to really give them for interactive streams. So that's when you go on and you pick a song. Now they have to do it for every single type of stream there is, um, thanks to the Music Modernization Act. So I mentioned that there's a new licensing company that will be generated from this and they're gonna be administered by SoundExchange as far as I know. Um, but this new licensing body can audit the DSPs, which is really, really dope. And the songwriters can audit the new licensing body which is really, really crazy. That means that, that there's gonna be some oversight and there's gonna be some accountability to people not paying royalties. And this is amazing. This is really, really great. And it's really, really forward thinking of this bill. So number eight is songwriters now have a seat at the table. They will become a part of the governing body at this licensing entity that, uh, that will make decisions on behalf of songwriters. They will have four seats on the board of directors. They'll take up 50% of the advisory committee and they will take up 50% of the dispute committee. Number nine is a really, really great part. So now the DSPs, all the digital service providers are required to fund this new licensing body. So they have to pay for this licensing body to operate, which means that the licensing body will take less commissions from creators. Obviously, there's going to be some give and take with the new legislation. The DSPs aren't just going to sign up and give their permission for this to continue without adjustments, uh, without a little bit of protection for them. So number 10 says that the DSPs will be protected from legal action uh, based off of copyright claims and that type of thing because the licensing body will protect them and make sure that everybody gets registered and everybody has proper claim to their work. So it gives them a little bit of a cushion or a wall from money being siphoned from them over, over the long run. Number 11 is that this will be a free public database. That means that people will be able to search for creative works. They'll be able to find their works. Um, they'll be able to find other people's works. Say they want to license that music or use that music um, for sampling or something like that. They'll be able to actually find the people that have created these works and get permission from them to use them or the DSPs will be able to connect that information really, really easily. People won't be confused as to where all this information is. And it'll be stored digitally within the music licensing company that is created. Number 12 is satellite radio is uh, now uh, held accountable and they will have to pay higher royalty rates to song creators and performers. Number 13 is owners of works that were created between 1923 and 1972 will now be protected from their work being pushed to these DSPs or uh, 
streamed by millions of people and they're never able to claim compensation or ask the DSPs to take the music down. So the last one is really great for producers, mix engineers, sound engineers, all these people that are involved in the music making process in the background. Now they're protected and they will be able to receive royalties based off this new act. That means that the sound recording that is created from all of this mixing and mastering and producing and all these other things will now be monetized for them to collect a portion of it as well. So they'll be able to claim their part in the process. So I hope that cleared everything up. It wasn't as short as I wanted it to be, but um, this is very, very complicated as far as legislation is concerned and it's very, very exciting. So shout out to everybody that uh, participated in making sure that this thing happened. Uh, don't worry about Kanye West. Don't worry about Donald Trump. That's all a part of the show. The important work happened on the ground with the senators and the representatives that all pushed this bill through and all the people that were in the background like myself and other folks that really, really petitioned for this thing to happen. Uh, the, the bloggers, the people in the press and media, Ari, and all these other folks that got together to make sure that this bill was successful like I, I really appreciate it and I'm sure you the viewer are appreciative of this too so I have one more thing to announce now I have my official Amazon influencer store so that means if you make music and you need a little bit of help figuring out exactly what it is that you need to start with or how to create your own home recording studio I created a whole new like sort of list of things that would get you set up and get you running and put your studio together and now that's available in the link down below just look for my amazon affiliate links down below and that will help me pay for more videos and get more information to you quickly on a weekly basis so until next time this is your homeboy wordplay tj i appreciate you watching this video peace Thank you.